pleasure to be here this morning and the opportunity to uh, address this conference. Um, I'm Chris Cracknell, I'm Chief Executive of OCS Group, and I'm going to split my presentation really into two parts over the quick 10 minutes that we've got together this morning. I'm going to do a short introduction about the group so I can set out uh, our strategy, what we do, as I guess we're unfamiliar to many of you in the room, and then I'm going to talk about our experiences uh, within India and the program that we undertook uh, to get our investment program, our operations here uh, in India established. Um, OCS Group Limited, uh, it's a privately owned family business. It was established in 1900 in the UK in London as a window cleaning business by Frederick Goodliffe. And it is still a family business today, still owned by the Goodliffe family, 100%. Um, privately owned is a key point because I think this is something that has given us a very good start point within Southeast Asia and South Asia as we deal with other family businesses. And this is a point that in developed economies like the UK, I think, is underestimated a lot of the time. Our turnover, there it says 926 million. It's actually closer to a billion now uh, as an organization on a global basis. And we employ around 94,000 people around the world. And I'll show you a graphic on that later, which then captures our strategy and our development plans into South Asia. Uh, we operate across 50 countries. Um, and this year, really proud that we won the Queen's Award for Enterprise uh, for International Trade, recognizing what we've achieved since about 1988 in growing our international businesses and taking the group outside of the UK. Now, this slide captures uh, our current position with our strategy. And out of those 94,000 staff, you'll see from this slide, actually only 26,000 of them now work in the UK. And if we focus on the blue area, which is Southeast Asia, South Asia, and the Middle East, we employ around 61,000 people in that area. And we've only just started in the Middle East. And I've just been informed our staffing numbers here in India are now around 22,000 people. Our strategy since 88 has, to, has been to grow our emerging market capability. So what, what does OCS do? Well, we offer facilities management. Um, the two brands you'll be familiar with here in India are OCS uh, and Canon Hygiene, our washroom hygiene business. And our goal is to help our clients achieve their strategies by looking after the facilities in which they operate. So it's cleaning, security, hygiene, catering, um, anything to do with the hard services side, anything to do with running a building so that our customers can focus on their core competencies and achieve their strategies. A little bit about our history uh, in India. Um, as a family business, I guess in some ways we're also quite cautious. An approach we've used around the world, and I'm talking to you today as an operator, someone who has made the investments and then had to integrate them and run them subsequently to make them do what we want them to do uh, in the first place. We used an approach um, where we accepted we were going to burn our fingers on the way through on this journey. Um, it doesn't matter, that's not a reference to India in particular, but to all of our ventures overseas. We have preferred to go in small, to learn, and then refine our strategy for that particular country, and then build and see it through. India was no different for us. So we won our first uh, cleaning or janitorial contract here in 1999. Um, we had local partners. Uh, they're not with us today. We, we, we decided after a period of time we needed to change that. Um, we then launched Canon Hygiene, our washroom services business here in India. We partnered with a local company, Pest Control India, another family business with the Rao family. Great partners, really excellent partners, personal friends now, uh, and, and people we can really work with. Uh, we actually bought out their 50% shareholding in this last 12 months, and that was all according to plan, with both parties being extremely happy uh, with the outcome. And so this sort of sets out our history here of what we did. Now, uh, we're talking about mergers and acquisitions versus organic growth. And actually, for me, the answer is in the middle. We need to make some M&A investment merger or acquisition investment at the beginning to give us a foundation stone or a building block. We have to choose those companies carefully. I think one of the biggest perils is to set out a strategy, I must achieve an investment by this time, and then go out and be forced by the timescales you've announced and buy the wrong company. We've always said, 
let's find the right partners, make the investments, and the timescale is actually pretty irrelevant because we're working to a longer-term business plan as a family business. If we look at the various investment models, I think, is it 100% on day one? Is it going to be a joint venture? What's the earnout going to be over a period of time? These are all options. I don't think there is a fixed answer. I believe you have to look at the individual case and work out which is best for you and your acquired target or your joint venture partner. But be clear up front about what your goals are. If you think you're going to, or if a British company thinks it's going to come in here and change its plan halfway through and think it's big and mighty, it isn't going to work. It's the other way around. We've got to learn how to operate as British companies within this market. And another key lesson I would share with you is if, as a British company, you don't like, as an individual, India, then don't put it on your strategy. If you don't love the country, if you don't like the food, if you don't like the people, the colours, the smells, the environment, the noise, then don't come here because you can't manage in this country without enjoying it and having fun here. If we look then at the organic growth argument, that is essential. Emerging markets, we must expect a minimum of 20% organic growth. If we look at the multiples that are being paid for these investments, then organic growth pays, plays a key part in making them successful. Investment first, your building block. Organic growth around it and developing the people and staff is the second phase. Both work together, not in isolation of each other. Um, I think there are some other key points, and I'm just quickly going to uh, cover those off. I know we're very limited on time. Again, for me, overseas emerging markets need to be run locally and in-country and not remotely. Suitcase companies do not work in the current marketplace. You have to set up a presence, you have to commit, you have to put people on the ground, you have to be visible, and you have to have demonstrated that you're here for the long haul. If you're not prepared to do that in India or any emerging market, then don't go there. I think as a British company, we should forget the days of the pink map. Uh, colonialism is dead. If we think we're going to bring the Union Jack out here, plonk it on the ground and say we've got all the answers, forget it. Actually, all the answers are here, and you should be teaching us what we should be doing in our developed economies longer term. Retention and development of staff is paramount. There are great people available here in India. There are also, they are also in significant demand. So how are you going to make our investments as OCS the attractive place to keep them, keep them motivated, and let them develop? And I think, I guess, at the last point, you need to be clear as to your target market. A shotgun approach of doing a little bit of everything is not going to work. We want to be very clear multinationals, internationals, large nationals. We want people that aspire to the same standards and ethics as our customers that we do as an organization. We are not so desperate we have to pick up work regardless. It's actually about sticking to the strategy and the business plan. And the great problem in coming into a big country and a big economy is you get carried away with the potential. And you think, well, if I'll just pick this bit up here and I'll pick this little bit up there and that bit down there. It won't work. You'll end up with a mishmash that doesn't stand by your ethics and will fall apart longer term. So stick to what you know best and your target strategy. And be very clear what you stand for as a company investing in India and stand by those principles all the way through. Make sure your partners understand it at the beginning. Make sure your customers understand it. And make sure your own staff understand it. Potential in India, I think, is phenomenal. Um, we as OCS believe this will be our largest operation globally within about five years. We believe we cannot match the scale of growth that will happen in India ourselves as a business because we'll have limitations about bringing staff in, training, uh, and getting our standards and keeping a consistency with our customers. We are really excited, and I believe certainly longer term, here in India, the management of talent, innovation, and technology will be exported and used by our businesses around the world. This won't be a, a country that we are sharing information inwards for too much longer. It will be a country which is sharing information outwards to the rest of our global operations. The potential here is enormous. It's fun. Enjoy it. But be brave. 
and you need firm nerves and patience, and you will make mistakes on the way through, but you learn from them, and it's great fun. Thank you. Thank you.